Let's use our neural network code that we wrote for the exclusive uh, OR problem and apply it to recognition of handwritten digits. So let's make a copy of this and open the notebook and the, the data set uh, that we're going to use that I'll show you right now is called MNIST. Uh, so I'm going to name the file Neural Network MNIST. Okay, so let's see what we have to change. Uh, I probably will need all of this, uh, so I'll just, I'll just keep it and let's load the libraries. And uh, so actually the MNIST, so normally here we would download uh, some data set, but the MNIST data set is actually uh, so famous that it's uh, pre-installed here on Google Colab. Uh, so if I show you the files, there's something called sample data. And in that data, uh, we have some MNIST uh, test and, uh, and train. So this is what we're going to use. We're going to use this CSV file here. So we're going to start with our pandas data frame. Uh, oh, going to read a CSV file. And actually, we better, we better have a look at it first. So let's comment this out because I need to know whether there are any headers there or not. Um, so we want to look at the file. Um, so it's in sample data. And we want to use this one. Yes, okay, so Oops, let's go all, actually let's, uh, instead of cat, I'm going to use head, that shows me the top, because I just want to see whether there is any, no, there are no uh, column labels, okay, so you can see lots of columns here. Um, okay, so I'm going to read in this file, and I probably should uncomment this. I don't need this. And I need to tell it that there are no headers, like so. Let's look at our data. OK, so you can see that worked quite well. Uh, so what have we got here? So the first column here is a number between 0 and 1. So these are these contain um, images of handwritten digits. And that may not be very obvious uh, from this, but let me, let me show you how that works. So uh, what you have here, uh, let's see how, let's see what the shape of this is. So you have 20,000 images, and so that's the number of rows, and the number of columns is 785. So the first column is what number the image represents. And so the, the remaining 784 are the pixels uh, in the image. So let's start by separating uh, the label from the pixels. So my x values are going to be um, are going to be the pixels, and so. Now, normally I would just give a column name to each, but if I have 784, that's clearly not practical. So I'm going to use this command. And basically, this just tells the program to take, um, let's see now. So I want colon, comma, and then starting from so remember, we, we start with zero. So starting from column one up to 785. Column one to 785. Uh, that's my x 
values. And normally I would call this y, but as you'll see, um, we have to convert this to, to y values first. So let me call it labels for now. So that is just just the zeroth uh, column right here. Okay, so actually let me just make sure that that's the way it's supposed to be. So labels, what does that look like? Ah, okay, I'm missing. So I messed that up here. That should be comma and that should be the colon. So let's say that, yeah, so here we have the labels, right? So the first label is of a six and, and things like that. Okay, great. So now I have that I can uh, try to uh, make a picture. So show you a picture of one of the labels. So uh, let's actually let me go down here, start a new cell. So we don't need this. Um, let's look at the first label. So the first label, so that's in location zero, that should be a six. Okay, so let's try to make an image from the pixels. So I'm going to say that the image I want, uh, the x values, the first set of x values, and I have to convert these to actual values, not a data series. And then I want to, in the matplotlib, I want to use the image show. Okay, but of course an image is not a line of numbers, it's a, it's a grid of numbers. And so uh, we have 784 because that's actually 28 squares. So it's a 28 by 28 pixel. Um, so I have to reshape this from a, a, long, a, a list of numbers that's 100, 784 long to a 28 by 28 matrix, like so. And then I just, uh, yeah, let's just go with that. And let's see what that looks like. Ah, okay, yeah, so that's, that's clearly a six. Um, the colors here are kind of fake. These are really black and white. Um, so let me just change the color map. To grays. Excellent. Yeah, okay, so that's clearly a six. Well, it's kind of a funny looking six, but it, it's a six. Let's, let's see what the second number is. So that's in position one here. That's a five. Okay, yeah, that's clearly a five. Okay, and so basically what we want to do is train the network to, to recognize that this is a five uh, from the pixels. Okay, so the problem is that in the previous um, neural network, right, you, in logistic regression, you can basically get a number between zero and one. So you can't really get a number between uh, zero and nine, which is what you want. And so what you do here uh, is, is something called one-hot encoding. So let me show you what that is. So we use a function in Pandas uh, with a kind of a strange name. Uh, called get dummies and we're gonna work that on the labels. Okay, so that what we have here is basically an, an encoding. So we have numbers here between zero and one and the way we tell that this is a six is that it's, it's on position, it's right under the six, right? So uh, if you have a one here, that means it's a zero um, if we have a 1 in this column, that means it's a 2. If we have a 1 in this column, that means it's a 6. Okay, so we now have a way of, of mapping numbers from 0 through 9 
onto uh, values that are between 0 and 1. Now, but what that means is that we don't have a single output from our neural net, right? So what we have, we actually have to have 10 different outputs, and we have to see which one of these, which one of these outputs is closest to 1. Okay, so this is going to be a, a, a more complicated neural network. In fact, in fact, let's look at it. So here is the neural network we made in the previous video, right, where we have uh, two inputs, plus a bias, right, and through a hidden layer we have one output which can be either 0 and 1. Okay, now we have to expand our network because we now have uh, your, our x vector, our x value for each point is 784 long, right? So we need 784 input nodes plus a bias. Then we have a hidden layer, uh, which is not necessarily the same size as the input or the output. And now our output layer actually has 10 nodes, right? Uh, and so these values here, these y predicted, all will be between 0 and 1, and the one that's closest to 1 is going to be the, the prediction of our number, of our digit. So, actually, let me get rid of that. Okay, so let's go down, let's run this, so we have our uh, things defined. Okay, and so now, yes, so the x We're going to grab these, this code here, so it's all in one spot. Here, insert it here, and right, so we read in our data, we assign the x values and the labels, and then we have yeah, so we don't have any. We have don't have the y values defined yet. So let's so let's take it one thing at a time, actually. So we can remove this. Uh, this has to do with the y value. So let's put that down uh, here when we talk about y. So y is pd get dummies. labels. Alright, so that will now be, uh, yes, fine. Let's remove this and, ah, yes, one more thing. So let's go up and look at our, look at our x values here. Because one thing we have to be certain of, ah, here, okay, so you can see uh, we have some relatively large values here. So as we talked about with the logistics problem, right, the, the x values we, we feed in have to be between 0 and 1. So clearly we have some numbers here that are much, much larger. So let's see what the maximum value is. Okay, so that gives, this gives me the maximum value for each, and it looks like the maximum here is 255. Well, but let's make sure. So let's look at the maximum of this. Yes, 255. So that means we have to go down here and divide our values by 255, just like we did for the logistics uh, regre logistic regression problem. Okay. So the next thing here then is obviously the, the size of the weight matrices uh, are a little bit different. So let's actually, let's make this, I think to make this a little clearer, um, let's go look at the picture again. So this is the, the, the code we're looking at now basically describes this scenario. So you have two hidden nodes, uh, two input nodes plus a bias, 
and that goes to the hidden layer which has two nodes plus a bias and then the output node you only have one right so here is the matrix is set up right so we have two sets because we have two hidden nodes right we have two sets of three uh, we have two input nodes plus a bias so let's uh, let's rewrite this a little bit so let's define in this case our input nodes All right so that's two our hidden nodes that's also two and our output nodes Uh, so that's one, okay? So what we have here, number three, that's the number of input nodes plus the bias. And two here is the number of hidden nodes. All right? And then three here is the number of hidden nodes plus the bias. And this is the number of output nodes. Okay. So, yeah, so with these values, we'll get exactly what we had before. Now, of course, now we have 784 input nodes. Uh, and we have 10 output nodes. And so the question is, how many hidden nodes do we want? And so it should probably be some number between 784 and 10. And so that's probably something we have to play around with. So let me just sort of arbitrarily set this at 100 input nodes. Okay, so that now we have a, a random guess uh, at our uh, weights that connect the input and the hidden layer and the hidden layer and the output layer. Okay, and before, while we're still debugging, uh, let's set the number of epochs to one. And let's see, everything else though, actually maybe let me pretty this up a little with some comments that really wouldn't hurt. So let's call this forward propagation, right? Where we, com uh, um, yeah, where we compute by predicted and then so we have y predicted, then we calculate an error, and then, yeah, we need the hidden error for the back propagation. So, okay. But everything else here really should work. So let's try to run it with one epoch and see what happens. Uh, okay, we got an error. Yes, so it's complaining So these two, so that is when I compare y and y predicted, right? These, these need to be the same. And right now they're sort of opposite. They need to be the same because we're subtracting them from each other. So let me just um, fix that, right? And, and the reason we have a problem here is now our output is, for a single input, our output is actually a vector, right? And not a number because we get 10 predictions. So if I transpose this, that should fix the problem. So I got an overflow. Okay, that, let me stop that right there. An overflow in the exponential function. So that, that usually means that you're giving it some, some value that is much too large or much too small. So let me, ah, okay, so here, yeah. So I need to set x equals this. Um, okay, so that should do it. And actually, also while I'm here, uh, let me rewrite this so that it doesn't use a data frame, um, which is what we have right now, but actual values, numerical values. This should, this should speed things up a little bit. So let's uh, see how that works. Okay, great. So the overflow is gone and I get, uh, I get some error. Now, I could try to print y predicted, but there's, there are 20,000 of these that are predicted. And actually, um, I also want to, what I'm really interested in is, is how often it predicts uh, the right label. 
So let's see if I can print out what the first predicted label is. Uh, so let's let's look at the, the very first Y predicted. So Okay, so that's the first Y predicted. It's a list of, of 10 numbers. And what I really want to know now is what is the largest um, value in this array, right? And so the position of the largest value will give me the label. So if I just look at this, um, this one, this one looks to, to be the largest, right? So that should be one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so let me, so I can find that automatically with a NumPy tool called ArcMax. Yeah, okay, so that tells me that what, what the very first prediction it does is uh, the number six. Okay, so now I wanna compare that. So, well, actually, so, so that will be, I wanna do this for all of them now. So that's going to be labels, I'm going to call this labels predicted, and I want to do it for all of them, so I don't want this, and uh, yeah, so yeah, what I, what I have to do is tell it whether to search in the rows or the columns, right, before I just gave it a row, so it, kn it knew what to search, this tells it to search in the rows and not the columns. Okay, and so, yeah, then I, I basically, what I wanna do is now figure out how many times uh, the label is correct. So, I can do that. Here by asking when is the, so, Oops, but this function here will give me a zero if labels predicted is equal to labels. And it'll give me a one if they're equal and a zero if they're not equal. So by summing them up, I should figure out, that should tell me how many are equal and then I wanna divide that by the total number to get a percentage. So let's try to run that. Okay, that gave me an error. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, I should really make up my mind whether I want to call it labels or, yeah, let me call it labels predicted. Okay. Ah, okay, and to, to actually check something, if something is equal, you need two equal signs, just like I have up here, in fact. So that was stupid. Ah, okay, so I get a success rate of about 7%. So that's my error and that is the, so 7%, right? So if, now obviously I've only run for one epoch, right? And so I have 10 possibilities and if I just, I pick random weights, that's gonna lead to a random prediction. And so I would expect something of success rate of around 10%, right? And so 7% is pretty, is pretty close to that. Now, that's, so that's kind of what I expected. Um, but of course, we've only run one epoch. So let's run uh, some more. Let's run a thousand, let's say, and see how that works. So of course, with 20,000 points, this is a little slow. So let me, maybe I was a little too ambitious here. Let's just try, let's just try 10 first, frankly, just to see how it's working. Uh, because then, uh, okay, so it works. So the error rate, the learning rate, sorry, is not too large. Um, so let me see if I can increase that a little bit. Um, so even the point one, let me try, let me try something crazy here. So let's try a learning rate of one. So it's really moving. Okay, and so you can see that that allows the error to drop quite a bit. And so now we're, 
up to 15%, which is better than random guessing. So let's let's try 100. Okay, so we're up to 30%, so it's getting better, but it's getting better kind of slowly. So let's uh, let's let's try a thousand. So I I'll I'll uh, edit out the wait time here, and then we can see how we're doing. So see you in a bit. Okay, that took forever, but uh, you can see we're actually doing fairly well now with a thousand. So we have an 86% success rate. So that's actually that's a, not not. Not bad. It took a long time, but it's not bad. Um, so we now have a neural network that can that can recognize uh, handwritten digits. So that's pretty exciting. Now in the next video, I'll I'll show you how we can speed this up.